Earlier this month, the state released its annual Crime in Connecticut report for 2022. That data shows a drop in crimes like murders, rapes, robberies, and car thefts from the previous year. But is the report something to celebrate, or do concerns exist when you go deeper into the data? We're talking about that with State Representative Pat Boyd, a Democrat representing the 50th District. He is co-chair of the General Assembly's Public Safety and Security Committee. Also joining us this morning, State Senator Paul Ciccarella. He is a Republican and ranking member of the General Assembly's Public Safety and Security Committee. He represents the 34th District. Thank you both for being with us this morning. I want to ask you uh, about these numbers. Uh, Representative Boyd, I'd like to start with you. Can you tell me uh, exactly what your take was when you saw these numbers come out? Yeah, uh, thank you, Eric. You know, first of all, I think it's positive to see in a whole that crime is down. Uh, but I think it's also important to realize that it's a snapshot in a moment in time. And, and even if murders are down, the data shows that property crime is up. Uh, and we need to have public policy that, that follows those areas. And knowing that that snapshot uh, may not be a, uh, what's occurring right now. Does that mean that changes are needed, Representative Boyd, or do you think that we're, we're moving in the right direction? Well, I, obviously we're moving in the right direction, but I think we always need to be uh, adapting to what the crime statistics say and what we're hearing uh, from law enforcement in the field. We can never be uh, content with the way things are, and we need to react appropriately uh, to what the data says. Senator Chicarella, let me turn to you, and I want to read you what one of your colleagues, Senator Kevin Kelly, the Republican leader, said. Uh, he called the numbers. He said he's not buying it. He says there is lawlessness on the streets of Connecticut. Do you feel the same way? What are you hearing from your constituents? So, um, as Pat said, I agree that if there's um, a trend um, in the positive direction here in Connecticut, I'm going to support that. Um, and as Pat also said, there's ups and downs in certain crimes. Um, but we have to keep in mind, um, these are significantly higher than pre-pandemic. Um, so we're talking a reduction from 2021, um, but they are significantly higher from pre-pandemic. And more alarmingly, um, you know, we're on a trend that's going to surpass not only the murders, unfortunately, um, but also the car thefts. Our car thefts and our, our murders in 2023 are, are high. And we see that every day when we turn on that TV. So that's where I would, would agree with Kevin Kelly um, that, you know, th it's not an accurate depiction of the report that was released. Well, certainly the numbers do show that the murders and car thefts are up over the last 10 years, but overall crime is down over the last decade. So do you, Senator Chigarella, do you think it's that the high profile stuff is making people, is it a perception problem? Are they feeling less safe or is it that they actually are less safe? So, you know, our police do a phenomenal job here in Connecticut. Um, but what I'm hearing from them are um, the lack of numbers. We need more officers on the streets. And when they post jobs, there are not many applicants. I was just talking to some officers at an event. Pat was there just about a week ago. And they said that 10 years ago, they would post an opening and there would be hundreds of applicants. Now we'd be lucky to get 12. And that's a problem. So when you take that into consideration and see what's going on and look at the headlines and, and listen to the constituents, you know, I think they do feel unsafe. Um, and, and I think we have to address that um, and, and find ways to get more officers on the streets and hold people accountable for their actions. Representative Boyd, I want to ask you about those numbers. One of the things the governor put out when he was uh, touting uh, some of the good numbers in this report, uh, he credited the state for having hired more troopers. I know there's still a big shortfall, and, and I know uh, we've heard on this show what Senator Ciccarella just said, that it is harder to fill some of those openings. Do you think that is an area of focus? It, it was something the governor said he was proud of was more troopers, but there are still some vacancies. So, you know, one of the things that the legislature did over the last couple of years was to authorize more state police troop trainee troops uh, to come forward, because we know uh, statistically the number of troopers on the job are down significantly from 10 years ago uh, and even five years ago. And one of the main areas of focus that the Public Safety Committee took on last year was this idea of police as well as firefighter and EMS re recruitment and retention, that we need to be able to hire some of the best people because every police department nearly fire department EMS service across the state uh, are struggling to fill uh, positions that they have budgeted. So I think, you know, to some extent, a report is a report. We should take a look at it. We should certainly look at areas of growth, uh, but areas of concern would also be what's going into that report and how is it being reported? And if we have less police out in the street, does that mean less crimes are being reported? All those things uh, together 
uh, you know, the by the Public Safety Committee has a long history of bipartisan uh, cooperation, and we collectively uh, jumped into uh, this recruitment issue. Uh, and then we're going to be back at it in February, and we've been meeting with police officers and troopers across our state to find out what the barriers are uh, in order to fill the ranks, uh, as well as firefighters and EMS as well. So we're going to continue that work. And Senator Chigrell, I want to ask you one other thing. Even in uh, commenting on the report, some groups that I think people would say are, were probably pretty liberal in their, their political views uh, came out and said one area they were concerned about was especially in poorer communities of color. They called some of these numbers intolerably high. Do you think there is a dichotomy, uh, two different Connecticut's, two different uh, places where, uh, you know, our viewers are living and maybe the, the effects in those communities are different? You know, I did spend some some time in New Haven and in Hartford um, and talked to some of those community advocates that are, you know, asking for help um, and they should be, um, you know, it shouldn't be two different places, you know, stronger cities make a stronger state. And, you know, they are seeing rises in crime. They are concerned. They're concerned for the safety of themselves and their children. Um, so I think we should, you know, listen to, to, to what they're saying um, and find a way to address the need. They want officers on the street. They want safer, safer streets. Um, and I think we need to find a way to, to make that possible. Well, certainly, as you look at the overall report, I think, as both of you said in your first comments, uh, the overall numbers do show a decrease uh, in crime. And it's certainly good to, to latch on to good news anywhere we can find it, certainly in today's day and age. But there are definitely, I think both of you would agree, areas that, that some changes could be made. And uh, we look forward to hearing from both of you as we continue to uh, cover those. And as you said, the uh, the 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 committee that you both sit on uh, will look at it, I'm sure, in a bipartisan way, and neither one of you have, have thrown any punches this morning, and we appreciate that, and we appreciate all the insight that you brought, both brought. Representative Pat Boyd, Senator Paul Chigarella, thanks for being with us here on CT23. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.